Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, tutorial video. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of landscaping. So, first of, uh, before you start making mountains and stuff like that, what I strongly suggest you to do is look around. Um, the game developers took, uh, probably the visual artist, took a bunch of time to create these beautiful landscapes and you can see there's actually a lot of details in everything uh, like you know like this valley for example here uh, even the ground has been carefully painted there's a lot of small details everywhere uh, I, they, they use a combination of assets like the rocks, for example, and uh, terrain. And it's basically um, what helped me figure out the details. Because you can landscape pretty quickly in the game, but it's going to look pretty bad unless you can figure out the details. So... I'm not going to do the entire map. I'm just going to do a small area to show you, you know, the tools and stuff. So the push and pull are pretty basic, right? It's push and pull. Uh, if you switch a lot between those two, you can also use control on your keyboard. If you hold control on your keyboard, it switches in between those two. Um, one very important thing when landscaping, do not undo too fast. So let's say I'll just uh, flatten this out. Okay. So let's say I do this, right? I'm like, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. And you want to undo. So uh, you can also, you know, shortcut on keyboard, control Z. Uh, but yeah, if you undo, you want to undo and wait until the undo is complete before you undo again. Now this is very important because one of the few ways that the game can crash is undoing too fast. So make sure you undo one step at a time, wait for it to complete and then you undo again. Um, personally, I tend to... Uh, Play on pause, so I'm just gonna pause. It's better for performance as well. Um, so yeah, let's say you do this. Uh, one thing that you want to do is don't put the intensity to 100%. That's a big mistake that other people do. It can do the job, but then it creates these rough edges all the time. If you want to do just a small hill you know it's easier to go softer move around a bit you can create a good little looking hill quickly um, flatten to foundation you'll notice that the radius here is larger now that's uh, because the size on some tools is actually uh the radius and uh this would be the diameter instead so just you know adjust accordingly uh also tools like flattened foundation and flattened to surface um the intensity varies from one tool to the other and like just ex an example here you know you can go quickly when you you can go s smoothly when you pull, but if you flatten, it's pretty intense. Um, hey, I made a ball! Look at that! So, yeah, if you want to use tools like flatten to foundation, for example, I just want to do a little bit, then you'll have to very, to, to highly reduce the intensity and quick, like just click a little bit. Otherwise, you create very quickly a very hard edge like this. Uh, that can be very useful for cliffs or things like this that you can see here. Uh, this has been created with that, with a flattened foundation, and then roughen up the edge, basically. 
Um, so the difference between flattened foundation and flattened to surface is that flattened to surface will follow whatever angle you click it on, while flattened foundation is always a flat angle. That's the real difference between those two. There's no other differences. Um, so flattened to surface can be very useful, but honestly, I don't use it myself. I just never had the reason to use it. I use flatten to foundation a ton. Definitely one of the most useful tools in the game. Chisel. What does that do? Um, so chisel sort of pushes in a flat way. So Chisel is your push, but flat. So if you keep chiseling like this, it's it's kind of like flattened to um, it's kind of like flattened to surface, but uh, you know you can move. Uh, it, it's moving deeper and deeper. I never used that tool ever. If that's something, um, if you tend to use flattened to to surface a lot but then you realize oh wait that's too that's too high I want it a little bit deeper well then chisel is the tool for you and as you can see if you go quickly sort of creating a rough edge so you can also use that to create sort of these cute little edges like that a little bit um, yeah smooth now the smooth tool a lot of people will think, well, this is horrible, let's use the smooth tool, right? The thing is, smooth tool will not delete, you know, entire mountains and stuff. It it does over time, of course, a little bit. But once you get to a certain point, it no longer really has an effect. The smooth tool is mostly for these rough edges. It deletes any rough edges, but it will keep your shape. If you want to really remove, you know, like, well, this, this, for example, right now, it won't remove this edge there. It just won't. If you want to remove that, what you want to do is you pull a little bit. Or you push a little bit. Now it removes the edges. See? And then you can smooth it out. Just remember to put the intensity higher up. That's how you make a smoother surface. It's a combination of those. And roughen would be obviously the opposite. Kind of. It actually, like, roughen is one that you want to lower the intensity. Uh, it creates these random bumps and ridges on any surface. It's, I, I wouldn't say that it's really the opposite of smooth. Like, even, see, even at 10%, look how quickly it creates random landscapes. This is really just randomized. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it's the opposite of smooth because, like I said, if you smooth it out afterward, it doesn't fully smooth it. There's still some left, and that's at 100%. So, yeah, it's really just rough and it's for random crevices, basically, if you want to make it rough. Uh, but yeah, I, I still think it's kind of a... It's a touchy tool. It's a, a very specific tool. Um, so, let's create... This, this is a just giant mess. Let's create a little something here. Uh, let's say I want to make a, a mountain. So first of the scale. Um, when you have an empty space, it's kind of hard to figure out the scale of everything. So you might want to put in some elements to scale you up, to figure out how big do I want to do this, right? Uh, keep in mind that some of the trees are actually ginormous. Doesn't really show when you just look at this, right? 
Uh, so you might want to want the size of a person. Now, everybody uses the Archer animatronics. And there's a good reason for that. If you actually compare to people in the game, the Archer is the exact height of a person. Like at the, at the hat, right there. You would have, like if this is a guest in your park, you have a balloon on top. The balloon is going to be here-ish. This is really the height of someone, an adult, in your park. Uh, so that's a good way to get your bearings. Um, then you can compare with trees. Like some of them are really, really tall. Uh, some of them are smaller. If I take, for example, where is it? There it is. Red Emperor is not that big. This, this is probably the smallest one in the game. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, let's say, for example, you take one of these. Well, actually, I can just grab one of these. Literally. Oh, you can't duplicate? Never mind. I can't. Uh, but yeah, black spruce, spruce, black spruce tree. For example, I believe it is... Yeah, there it is. Kind of big. Kind of big. Uh, you have smaller versions, of course. So let's say this is a small-ish tree. Uh, so that gives you a good size and then you can do your mountain. So let's say I want to make a big one, a big one. So this, you're starting out, that's a hill. Let's, uh, let's make it bigger actually. I like to use 70% intensity personally. Uh, here, let's flatten this out out of the way. There we go. So let's just do something random here. A big hill, big mountain. Let's make it bigger. Now, uh, you know what? I'll take make this one kind of rough and this one kind of smooth. So let's do it like this. Now you'll notice that this is getting more of a round-ish hill, right? Look, it's not getting this rough edge of a mountain. That's because of the size of the tool. There's no, uh, can you please make a sharp edge tool? Unless you play with like flattened surface and then modify and everything. Uh, personally, the way I like to do it is I reduce the size and then I go again like this and then reduce the size again and then you can make your uh, like middle ridge like more sharper uh, so I'm gonna reduce this it's too it's too quick if you want to make a great looking mountain, you need to take the time to do it in detail. It it can't just quickly be done. I, uh, a quick hill, definitely. 30 seconds, you're done. A good looking mountain takes time. This is pretty tall. In fact, I would say that it's bigger than what I wanted. Uh, but, you know, it's fine. doesn't matter. I want to make this a little bit of a cliff, so I'm going to push it in a little bit. Uh, it really helps to reduce the intensity. You can make a more defined amount of detail with this. I really like this side. This side is good looking. Um, something that I find in everything, right? In everything, what really helps is contrast and in the case of making landscaping your contrast is multi-level its depth uh, the terrain color as well we're gonna go into that in a moment now this side is kind of crappy looking so let's use the roughen tool a little bit oh there we go 
Yeah, this is getting interesting. I'm gonna ridge it up here on top. Now this is getting interesting. I want a kind of a tip here. Now you'll notice that uh, it all it automatically creates this rock on the side and grass on the top. That's because I'm on auto paint. Uh, you can change this. Uh, we're gonna go into painting actually, basically now. So uh, painting is a big deal. By default, you al you always have these eight uh, different colors. Basically, it, it, it's really just coloring. Right? And if you look around, you'll see that they actually variate a lot in the pre-built stuff. You have a little bit of brown here, a little bit of yellow-ish here, kind of things like that. Um, and that's just using your different paints available. Um, so you always have this basic rock and rougher rock. By default every color palettes like if, if you take the desert this is alpine uh, but like if you take the desert you'll have um, multiple rocks like that tropical same thing they all have different things like that uh, and so if you do customize just keep in mind of uh, the the default palette you kind of want to keep certain things in the certain same spot so this is your default rock, this is your default ground. And if you change your default palette, you'll want to to keep a rock type in the first slot and a ground type in the fourth slot. Um, and then this is kind of like variations. And this is kind of like um, uh, accent. Accent is a good way of saying it. For example, you have this grass here. Here, let's put the intensity at maximum. This is sort of a uh, lush grass, while this is more of a tame, um, almost, I would say, uh, mowed grass or smaller grass. So this would be more like wild kind of thing. Uh, dead, dead grass. This is more of a dead-ish. I would say a different kind of dead grass. Um, you know, you have your rocks, your rough rocks. See how it creates this. It, it almost looks 3D, this one. It's really cool. Basic rock. And then this, this is a weird thing. Um, so many of these were actually meant to be used as an accent on top of something existing. So like if you take this regular grass, then you put this, a little bit of this, it looks like flowers through the grass. And you'll see that it looks very different than this. It's really meant for you reduce your intensity to 10%. Oh, by the way, the painting tool is very intense. Like you, just 14%, it's already almost too much. Like, to, you know, like boom. And you bang, you're already at almost 100%, just clicking like one second. It's, uh, especially if you want to paint a big surface, I strongly suggest going 10%. Uh, and yeah, so this, this grass, for example, if you put it on lush grass, it's going to look differently. You can still see a little bit of the lush grass going through. It's sort of a, um, yeah, like I said, it's an accent. You know, you put it on 10%, you put a little bit here, a little bit there. It makes it look good, but without hiding what's behind it. You can even put it on rocks, I think. Yeah, see, we can still see the rock through. And that's how the game is meant to be. You blend things in. So this, I roughen up the surface and you can see 3D wise, it's still roughened. But 
it doesn't really look rough unless you add a little bit of hard rocks. Not too much, just a little bit. It, it really makes it shine. And see, you can still see the little flowers through. So you can really combine, if you use your intensity at 10% you really, you can make really a wild variety of this and that put together. Uh, just keep in mind, some of the things actually don't mess, don't mesh well together. But, uh, ah, there it is. Yeah, there we go. For example, this grass and this grass. Um, it makes sort of a hard... Damn it. Just as I say that, now it unmeshes. Uh, well, anyway, it, it, it's sort of like if you try to mix different things, you'll realize that some of them, they sort of create this hard edge. Um... So it's really a trial and error. I think it might have be the amount of different things mixed together. There's a limit to how many things can mix together. I think that's what it is. So it's good to experiment. Um, and yeah, like I just added a bit of rock, of rough rock, and look, it's so much different already. Painting, painting is what creates. The details it really changes the whole look really by just painting a little bit so you want to make your shape first and then paint it um, otherwise like I was saying earlier the auto paint uh, that auto paint will paint everything to this color which is just you know Anything that's vertical will be rock, anything that's horizontal will be grass. There's a bit of, they use a little bit of detailing, like you can see a little bit of yellow here, but I think that's part of this rock. Um, but yeah, there's sort of these shades here, which I believe is a mix of rock and grass. So it will still detail everything automatically. But it's still, it's very monotone. Uh, when you start, you know, terraforming your entire park, then you'll notice that everything will start to look kind of bland. So you kind of want to put uh, as much detail as you can. Like just, just have this. See, this side was very interesting a moment ago. <laughs> but now that I added colors on this side this is much more interesting than this side and it's really just because I colored it so uh, yeah you know just detail everything and make sure you reduce your intensity to 10% otherwise it's gonna be just flat surface it's it can quickly kill all your details if you don't have any detailing it's kind of crazy um, <coughs> yeah I kind of want some dark brown here see now it's no longer blending and I think that's what I was saying earlier uh, too many different details will make it stop blending and uh, same thing like uh, terraforming if you want to undo while you do that Make it one step at a time. Um, so yeah, that's painting right there. I'm going to go quickly with the water. So the water in the game, very simple thing. You cannot place water on a flat surface. I think that's pretty obvious. Uh, so you first do a bowl of some kind and then you can place water. But see, now it's red because, um, well, it's not a really high ball, so let's make it higher. The very basic uh, rule, there you go. Sorry, I had uh, something in my throat. Uh, very basic rule with water. You cannot place water too close to another pool of water. As you can see, it is red right now because there's already water here. You cannot place water if your edges, there we go, 
if your edge is not closed. You need a closed surrounding edge. Uh, the type of water that you use, that's up to you. Uh, rough will look better from far away, I believe, or well, in a better, in a bigger surface. Ah, there we go. Sometimes there's waves like this. Um, standing water is disgusting. That is stagnant water. Uh, you'll see this type of water on the entrance of the tropical map. And dirty water, well, that's just pollution. And uh, it's disgusting, which is great. <laughs> I love it. Usually you want to use calm. Why? Because. Why not? I don't know. It's your water. You do whatever you want. Uh, but there is one thing that's very interesting about water. Let's uh, do a thing real quick. Like I was saying, it's looking for a fully enclosed hard edges hard edge whoops uh, here let's use a flattened foundation real quick a flat hard edge right so as long as you have enough it needs to be thick enough I whoops that's not what I wanted I don't know if this one is thick enough so I'm just gonna add this here flattened foundation there we go. Now I'm going to be sure. So as long as you have an outside edge, the game doesn't check for higher or lower. It only looks for this outside edge. So you can place water in the sky. And like I said, it also checks for if there's water above or below, but only a few steps. So if you go lower, you can double your water. And that's a little trick that I used in one of my parks. Uh, at some point, I had water above and below, so it would be kind of freaky. So that's a thing that you can do. Um, and if you're terraforming afterward, as soon as you delete this hard edge, the water disappears automatically. There you go. So yeah, have fun with that for sure. It's it's such a neat little thing. Um, just gonna delete this whole thing. There we go. But then, there we go. Oh yeah, here's a little thing that you wanna remember. When doing terraforming, you kind of don't wanna touch the edge of your park. Because once you you know, deleted this, it's really hard to make it smooth again. We can still see a line here. Um, it's almost impossible to... All oh, right. <laughs> it's almost impossible to uh, make it smooth again. So you'll have a permanent line, permanent visible line if you start doing that. Uh, for coloring, that you can definitely color because you can actually color outside so that's fine you ca just can't terraform outside the edge if you go in a scenario editor you can still do this all the way up to the actual map edge um, yeah we can see it here there's a line here that's the actual map edge and you can see the difference because you can click on the assets here. They still exist. Ah, oh, there we go. Now I can move the camera. Uh, these assets exist. But then once you get outside that line, this is just background. You can't even click on those. So all of this, it exists, but it it's a fixed asset kind of thing. Um... If you change the ground, uh, if you change the color palette in custom, you will see that it changes existing ground as well. So it will change it all the way up to here. And then this just becomes kind of disassociated. It's weird. 
but yeah, I've seen a lot of people, you know, what they do is they do a, a giant flatland, for example, or they do the terraforming the way they want, but they ignore what exists outside the park edge. So it creates this stupid looking hard edge. So then your park will be pretty despite the background. I strongly suggest that you don't do that. Um, personally, I like to use, you know, the middle part of the park for your own park. Um, and the rest, all the way to the outside edge, is just fading into the scenery. So that it just, it matches. Kind of like this. It looks natural, it looks good. Um, even in Scenario Editor, well, the only difference is instead of doing it up to here, you do it up to here. But yeah, same thing, you, I suggest that you don't destroy the existing scenery. Um, so I accidentally pushed here, whoops, when I was deleting the, the other thing. Eh, it's about right. Uh, and yeah. Like I was saying, auto paint. <laughs> we're, we're kind of getting a while back in what I was just saying. <laughs> um, auto paint will do this thing. You can do users use selected. It will s paint with whatever last thing you had selected, and it will, uh, you know, make it really monochrome. And you have also sampled. Sampled will take whatever exists, replace it on top of whatever you're doing. So if I do this, see. Uh, and if you don't want to change this, you just want to paint on top again with auto paint, you can do this. And it will make it accordingly as if you were terraforming. <clears throat> Once again, Still want to paint on top of that afterward. <laughs> Just a sec. Had something in my throat. Um, so once you're done with terraforming, uh, your landscaping, um, the big part of it would be details, um, scenery, stuff. Um, so what you want to do First off, you can still accentuate this more. If your if your cliff is not cliff enough, you can go in rocks. So basically your entire landscaping will be done in scenery, nature. And then you'll have like trees, bushes, and rocks, and you have like wall clambers. Probably not the planter in the top here. But like yeah. This, like the trees, the bushes, rocks, the wall climbers. This is what you're looking for here. Um, rocks have one type of rock per, well, one set per uh, scenery. Um, when you choose your map at first. By the way, if you choose city, it's the same as the Decidious. Uh, it's they use the exact same palette except uh, some of the accent colors are like asphalt and stuff like that um, so you can use the same rocks of course there's no harm in mix and match obviously uh, but you'll notice that the rocks have the same color so this is your uh, you know, like it's the terrain that I was using earlier. It's the color palette. Well, it's the same as these rocks. And the reason for that is you can use it if you uh, push it in, for example. Here, let's rotate this a bit. If you push it in, you can use this to create detailing in your cliffs and stuff like that. It kind of blends in. You know, and um, so a lot of people, when they use rocks, you know, you decorate your park like this, 
Ooh, pretty. But that really stands out. If you want, you can, like I said, blend it in like this. It's unnecessary, but it's an option. In this case, um, I think personally it's a great way if you're gonna place bushes and you want to... Um, now, uh, let's say I use this, for example. The bottom of the bush, well, it's not a good bush for this. Let's use the forest bush. There you go. Let's say I use the forest bush. The bottom of the bush looks a little bit... Um, you know, you, you have this gap here, right? In between the edge of your cliff and the bush. It's not perfect. So, what you can do is place a rock under like this and then you have more of a defined edge so that can help you with cliffs to define them more, more defined yeah <laughs> it, it makes it rougher uh, obviously you cannot paint on top of a of a scenery piece so that's something to keep in consideration while uh, wall climbers I think are amazing. Kind of uh, uh, make sure you have aligned to surface when you do that. Um, these aren't well, actually, yeah. There you go. These are pretty good. Uh, you can definitely, you know, decorate an entire cliff with that. Uh, just keep in mind they're pretty small compared to well what I did here. Uh, but you know, in small areas, small quantities can be very pretty. Uh, depends on what you're doing. I would suggest this one is kind of a. There we go. I would suggest maybe uh, that would be better if used with uh, maybe not a rock surface, but here, kind of like this. You know, when you have a little bit and a little bit of greenery, and you want this the green to shine, then you can use like wall climbers for this. Uh, one very important part when doing scenery stuff. I already did this sort of mistake here. It looks square, right? And that's because I did not rotate it. If you rotate a little bit, then it starts to blend in more. Rotation is key. And here's a big issue that if you don't rotate. Look at that. It's an army. They're exactly the same. They're clones. This is pretty bad. Make sure you rotate while you build your trees. So, when you build your stuff, just the easiest way to do this, just tap Z. It will rotate 90 degrees. So, just once in a while, it already looks a little bit better. Now, this is still horrible, it's just a, an example. But, see, just r having this rotation makes it look slightly more natural. So, alright. Let's talk about vegetation palette. As you can see here, we have a little bit of variety. Um, you don't necessarily need to copy whatever exists. You can do your own stuff, obviously. Um, but you kind of want to create yourself a palette first. Decide what trees, bushes, rocks, things like that. Decide what you want to use. So... Um, Let's say, for an example, uh, one of the uh, color, one, uh, one of the scenery that was you, well, that bleh, God dang it! One of the scenery that was doing at some point was in a winter section, and then there was this, uh, like I was doing a winter park, and then I had this section of the park where the snow was melted, kind of in a crater. 
the snow was melted so you could see grass. Uh, so let's first let's put the grass uh, kind of like dead grass because the, it wasn't a lush area. It was definitely more like dead grass. A uh, little bit, uh, let's say a little bit of this, just a little bit, and a little bit of this. Uh, yeah, it's not blending. Here, start over. Uh, no, start over with this. Okay. All right. And now 10% this, 10% this. Ah, there we go. So that's about what the ground looked like in my other park. So then I wanted to make this set of uh, trees that would probably grow in a forest, but it's still kind of cold. Um, I liked this. These are pretty good. Uh, but these are pretty big too. And I wanted something that was more of a... Uh, kind of, like, just because there's tree sizes, you know, you don't need to use all tree size, right? So I wanted something that was fitting a bit more. Um, oh yeah, I remember I was using these. These are really good. Um, what else did I use over there? Just once in a while I had one of these. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, I believe I used a bunch of these as well. So there you go. Now you're getting more of a palette. Um, so something you can do, if you're building on flatland, you can create your forest first. Like, I, I would say not a, a, a whole forest, right? Kind of like a, a square. This. A little bit uh, of this. Not too much. A few of these and I'll leave just one of these now when you do this make sure that you don't fill out the entire space you want to keep a little bit of open area so you can see the ground below especially if you take the time to do you know amazing detailing like this this um, you want to see the ground a little bit so keep some open areas. Uh, now to go with this, I was using also bushes. I believe you had the green ones, not the, wait, was it the green ones or the forest ones? Uh, green one, forest. Okay, yeah, so it was the green, I remember now. Um, so yeah, the green bushes, these are bigger. Also, uh, just be careful not to put one on top of another like this. That's something that occurred once in a while in my case. Trees on top of trees, and then I had to delete. Uh, so yeah, I have a few of these. Not too much, like I said. You don't want to cover your entire ground. Uh, you'll notice also that, well, these are kind of floating because there's a little bit of area underneath you can push them into the ground there's no there's nothing that prevents you of just push it push them in like this uh, same thing for uh, you know if you want to make a tree a smaller tree you can also push it in like this and then you have a very much smaller tree uh, nothing stopping you from doing that but yeah, I want to do. I, I want to show you the trick of using flatland, decorating flatland quickly. So here, I'm just gonna add a little bit more because I want more bushes. It's not enough here. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna use a little bit of number one as well. So in this case, in particular, the number one bushes, uh, number two bushes are the biggest one. Uh, so something that helps a lot, put your biggest assets first and then go with smaller assets. 
and just leave some room as you're putting your big assets so that you have room for the smaller assets later. It's, it's easier, I find that it's easier to figure your ratio um, and always, always keep empty space. Always keep empty space. And I still, I want some rocks as well. In this case, this is something that I was doing as well uh, when I did uh, my other park. Uh, something smaller. Yeah, there we go. Don't put too many rocks. Don't put too many rocks. Unless it's really what you want to do, you know, it could be a very rocky area. But I find that it's good to use them as just like an accent. So this is good looking. Now, like I said, if you're building on flatland, here's a little thing you can do. Once you did this square-ish thing, select the whole thing and merge. And now you can duplicate this thing and give it a rotation. And rotate a little bit on diagonal. It's good if you don't have an exact hard edge to do that so that you can make sort of a circle-ish. And there we go. Here's the forest. <laughs> so this works great on a flatland. Obviously, as soon as you go into landscape, um, well, yeah, see, you can always just push it in. It still works, but it's going to create this kind of weird edge here. Um, so this is why it's better on for flatland decorating you can create the forest very quickly like this uh, when you have more of a you know interesting landscape you'll want to what you can do is still you, you can still do this but um, make it smaller like if you make just this for example then it can still work see but it, it's still more touchy. So at, in the end, you know, place them one by one. It's easier. Uh, another thing, when you place trees, uh, you'll notice, I don't know, I think that in nature, trees don't really grow like this. So make sure that you don't have a line to surface. Place your trees upright. They're gonna look more natural. And just once in a while, take one and tilt it a bit. And that's gonna give you a very natural looking forest. Straight is the key for most of them. No, this this looks good, right? And you can do that with your you know with your giant forest as you're building it. You tilt one or two, and then uh, afterward, when you duplicate the whole thing, it's gonna be it's gonna keep that shape. So um, that's a really good way of uh, doing it very quickly. Uh, what else can I say? Oh yeah, detailing, detailing. Okay, so this is really good looking. But it's still very basic. Surprisingly, this is still, still very basic. I think it's a great forest. Um, I'm actually very satisfied with it. But let's say you do your path here. Uh, oh, this is... There we go. Let's say you have a path like this. Um, you know what? Let's make it a natural looking path there we go oh uh, by the way here's a, a small detail you see the difference between this and this is that this they will automatically color the game will automatically color um the path the the ground underneath that's the only 
difference. If you select the other path, it will just keep the terrain by default. So you could technically uh, create this path here. And then you take your terrain tool and you can color it yourself a different color. Right? And that, that's really the only difference. So um, let's say here that I'm having this path here and it's next to the forest. Uh, you might want to add more detail right next to it. So let's take a tree here. Uh, sometimes in a forest you'll have a few of them that are dead, right? Maybe not this tree. This is not the best. Uh, this one here, uh, Panderosa, that could work better, actually. Let's take the Panderosa. Oh, yeah. Especially with those uh, dead branches here. Um, like this. I like to push the roots a little bit in. I don't like how the roots look sometimes, so you can always just add a bush on top. Uh, let's take this. There we go. And now here's a good moment to actually push the bush in the ground a little bit. Especially because you're going to be looking at it from up close, so that's a great way of detailing like this. Um, great trees for having dead trees are, of course, the dead dry trees. Uh, if you push it in like this and you just keep a, a bit of branches like this, you have a dead bush. That can be very useful for a snowy area. Dead bushes like this, well, to create dead bushes. Uh, another dead bush for a snowy area, the number four here. Uh, once again, if you push it in like this, it creates these kind of dead branches um, kind of like uh, dead grass a little bit uh, if you take the other ones they have flowers in it the number four is the one that doesn't have any flower uh, another thing that I really enjoy doing for like more detailing would be um, which one was it uh, I think it's no it's not this one right oh it's this one there we go so you take these flowers, right? But these flowers can be colored. Now, if you take a brown color, go into a little bit of gray. Ah, there we go. Now it looks dead. And you push it in like this. And you now have some dead flowers. That can work great for winter scenery. Absolutely fantastic. Now, this is all high amount of details high details if you're gonna do that don't do it throughout the entire thing it's it's you're not gonna notice these details from deep inside the woods you know there's already bushes and everything so this is great for the side of your road or side of an open lake things like that don't go stupidly high detail everywhere. It's just going to hinder your performance for no reason. Um, also, those bushes, if you want to make a lot of bush very quickly, here's another trick. You take a tree, and one of the best trees for this is the sycamore, because the sycamore is considerably straight. So what you do is flip it to the side like this and then you push it in a little bit so we don't see the roots and you have bushes you have bushes instant bushes now this does create a rough edge rough edge here so you could use another one of these or you can just combine with existing bushes like this Um, and I uh, might want to put more. Don't forget to rotate. So it doesn't look uh, too repetitive. 
here. Let's put one more like this. And boom, you have like this whole area of bushes in, a, in an instant. It also gives you different color bushes. Like you have more options this way. I like this better. Um, so yeah, a tree on the side. Amazing. Uh, and because trees have, like I said, different colors. It uh, doesn't need to be on the side as well. Like some of them, like the oak, for example, it works better if it's straight up like this. Uh, and yeah, because you have different colors, you can have different type of bush like this. And this looks kind of like a small tree, actually. But that would not be wrong either because, well, bushes are small trees. So like this, you know, you can combine very, very interesting stuff. Now just keep in mind, if you do like a whole area like this, um, when you have this, when you have things that are underground and you duplicate, it's gonna look like this. So if that's the case, you'll need to push it in every time. But you can still, you know, duplicate and create a whole forest relatively quickly with great amount of details. So it's just a little thing to remember. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's everything. Oh no, yeah, that's not everything. One last detail. Uh, going back to terraforming. I know I skipped from one thing to another. But yeah, that, that's something very important, kind of. Um, if you want to create sort of a... Let's say you want to create a spiky edge, right? I've seen uh, some people uh, sculpt with terrain, and uh, there's a very good uh, console player on that, actually. Um, you'll notice that it's really hard to create a hard edge, and it will often look kind of like shit, like this. It's pretty ugly, right? Why does it do that? Well, to understand terrain, let's create a thing here. Um, if you go with one meter, right? That's your smallest section, your smallest thing. Uh, maybe I can go in between. So, the way the game works, you have points. And then, uh, as you're filling the ground, the game determines that this point is 100% filled, 0% filled. And it will ge generate what is in between. So, uh, a way of looking at, at this would be, uh, if, if I take art shapes here, small rounds, no, extra, extra small, there you go. Sort of like this, right? Um, let's do this real quick. Come on. There we go. Alright. So, it's sort of like this, right? You have an invisible grid, 3D grid like this. And then as you're filling up one, like, you know, as, as you're emptying something and you're filling up the rest, uh, you'll have sort of a uh, I need I need this uh, yeah bigger bigger there we go so you'll have sort of like this will be generated automatically in between kind of like this so that's how the game works for the terrain on small level and if if I was to empty this then it would push back change the shape of this that's how the terrain works kind of um, and that's why you can create these weird hard edges but you'll notice that a lot of times you're trying to do you know your very pretty cliff and everything and you want the edge to be pointy 
and it won't necessarily go exactly where you want it. That's because you're trying to build in between two of these points. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, if you want to make sort of a hard edge, what I suggest you to do is fill up more and then delete the rest. There's always a good trick as well. Path. Path will lock your ground. It locks terraforming. So if you want to create a hard edge, you can use path and then dig. And instantly you have a hard edge. Flattened foundation is a good one as well. See, you can see the edge there. Uh, flattened surface can help you. All of these things. But you can tell right there, this... Like this is the those positioning that I was talking to you about, where we can see there's sort of a um, grid. The grid exists and it cannot be changed. It is the default grid of the map. It will never change. So that's something, but that you can keep in mind. Um, you know, you you can use path to make these arches, but it will still look kind of weird like this. Uh, and even if you smooth afterward, it still looks a little bit kind of weird. So I still suggest you to pull a little bit on it to make it smoother and ignore hard edges. If, if you really want a hard edge, um, then what I suggest is uh, determine the shape of that grid that I'm talking about, right? You find that grid and then you use it. If you build in the exact shape of the grid, like if you follow that grid, then you'll be able to make harder edges than if you follow your road and stuff like that. And if I remember correctly, it is perfectly aligned to this line, the park limit, but I'm not sure. So that's something that you can try. So that's it. Now it's true. Now I covered everything. Uh, hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.